What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at Elite Code problem number 601, Human Traffic of Stadium. Mark this hard and it's actually the last hard problem we have to go through before we finish all Lead Code database problems that are available for free on Lead Code. So let's finish this one on with confidence. So we have a table called Stadium which has three columns. ID, Visitate and People. Visitate is the primary key and it says that each row of this table contains the visit date and visit ID to the stadium with the number of people during the visit. So pretty much counts the visitors to a stadium on every given date and also gives it an ID. No two rows will have the same visit date and as the ID increases, the dates increase as well. So it's already aggregated per visit date or there's just one entry per visit date and it's pretty much sorted by increasing dates. Our task is to write an SQL query to display the records with three or more rows with consecutive IDs and the number of people is greater than or equal to 100 for each. Return result table ordered by visit date in ascending order. The query result format is given below. So if we have that stadium table with eight IDs, ID 5, 6, 7, 8 are one of these cases where at least 100 people are visiting and we have three or more consecutive IDs. So for five we have six and seven following for six we have seven and eight following and we should output all these rows so eight and seven as well even though they don't have any more consecutively following rows but they're part of that triple that's created by id five or six anyways let's get started so there are some similar problems on lead code that all revolve around finding something in the next row or previous row which could be solved using a self-join which is what we're going to do here or window functions and lag and lead functions which let you look at the previous or next row depending on the current row you're looking at. But as I said we're gonna solve this using self joins and we're gonna have to do that twice probably because we're looking at not just two consecutive rows but at least three. So we're gonna start out by selecting from stadium and not just once but three times so we're gonna give this first one the name as one then join on s2 and then again on s3 and our join condition is where it gets interesting and where we're trying to solve that case of finding consecutive rows so we're gonna use IDs here and see if they're actually consecutive and trying to create that condition here. So we're comparing S1 ID with S2 ID and then also with S3 ID. So in the case of S1 being the lowest entry, S2 ID should be one higher and S3 ID should be two higher. So S2 ID minus one will be s1.id that makes it that makes s2 one higher and s3 should be two or higher so we're gonna say s1 id is s3 id minus two which makes s3 two higher so let's see where this takes us is if we're selecting every column from s1 it's going to give out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 as ID. So pretty much all except 7 and 8, which have no two consecutive rows and IDs anymore because they're pretty much the last entries. We do get entries for visiting days which have less than 100 people, which we can solve by introducing a where condition. And we're going to say that for each of these tables, these temporary tables that we're imagining when self-joining, there should be at least 100 people visiting. So as one dot people should be over 100, as two dot people should be over 100 or equal to 100, and same goes for as three dot people. So this should change our result and just give us rows five and six. So this test run gives us ID five and six which are the only entries which have at least two consecutive IDs and at least 100 people visiting on that day. 
We don't have entry 7 and 8 yet because they don't have any more consecutive IDs. So we pretty much just solved the case of the lowest element being S1 and we're just putting that out. That's all we established for here. So we could maybe think about giving out all columns for S2 and S3 as well, but that would just append not to our result table down below, but it would just add more columns. So we would have ID visit date and people three times for each of these tables. We do want to have it appended to our current table, so we do need to change up S1 in the join condition. And that's what we're doing right here. So instead of just allowing for that first clause, we're gonna copy that and establish the cases for S1 being the middle element in the triple. So instead of just being the lowest five and six, which we have in our output right now, we want to establish the middle element being six for the five, six, seven triple, or seven for the six, seven, eight triple, and then also establish the case in our third line that we just added for the highest element being eight for the six, seven, six, seven, eight triple, and the five, six, seven, seven triple, it would be seven. So let's see how we change up these clauses. We do need to remove that on clause, we only need that once, and connect them using or. So any of these conditions should be fine to establish our join, and that way we could capture all of these cases. So let's make S1 the middle element in the middle clause here. Uh, row three would be, or line three would be our case of S1 being the smallest element in the triple, line 4 would be the middle element in the triple, and line 5 would be the highest element in the triple. So in order to change that up we need to play with our calculations here. So we do make S1 the middle element by it being one higher than S2 or S3 and one lower than the other one, the remaining one. So S2 ID plus 1 would be S1, that makes S1 1 higher than S2. And if we put minus 1 for S3, that means S3 is 1 higher than S1. So it establishes S1 as the middle element. If you subtract 1 from it, you would get the lower element, and if you add 1 from it, you would get the higher element. How do we establish S1 as the highest element? We're pretty much just going to use plus here, so if we add 1 to S2, S1 should be 1 higher. If we add 2 to S3, S1 would be 2 higher. So that defines S1 as the lowest, middle and highest element. We do get an output of 7, 8, 5, 6, 6, 7 because we do have these cases multiple times now. So we select S1 multiple times if we have overlapping triples, as is the case right here. We have 5, 6, 7, we have 6, 7, 8, we have 5, 6, 7, 8 as being more than uh, three consecutive IDs. So in order to get rid of these double elements, we're going to use either distinct on our selection up here or group by in the end to get rid of these duplicates. If I run that code, it's not going to be the final solution yet. We do have 7, 8, 5, and 6, but they're not in the right order yet. Uh, we should also return the result table ordered by visit date. In ascending order, we're just going to add order by visit date here, and it would be in ascending order by default, so we don't need to write that out. But that should give us our final solution. It is an accepted output, so we're going to submit the query and get an accepted submission as well. I hope you were able to follow that problem. It has a lot of dislikes. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around how that condition works. As I said, you could also try to tackle this using window functions and lag and lead to find the previous and next entry. Yes, that being said, it is similar to some problems we've seen before, so this could be easier for you if you were using self-join on similar to problems like the rising temperature one. But that's been pretty much it for this problem. Hope it was helpful. I'll see you in one of the following videos. 
think I'm just going to go through the easy, medium, and hard database problems, which are not available for free only because you will need to have a premium subscription probably. But I think it's well worth it. I've been having that subscription for about a year now, and it's really paid off in my opinion. Anyways, it's been getting dark. I just wanted to quickly say thank you for the support on the videos and the comments you're leaving. I think it's a great community to just help each other out. No negative comments whatsoever yet. Uh, so I'm really glad to have this small community of us trying to tackle these data scientists, data analysts, machine learning engineer, or just software engineering interviews. So hope you're gonna stick around and go through some more problems with me. I'm also thinking about doing some other things on this channel as well. So some maybe stats questions or interviews or just general advice. Anyways, hope to see you soon and be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet.